Welcome into Buccaneer Insider. It is another week. Killian McClatchy and Anna Witte. And we are joined by a football player this week mixing things up. It is Nick Sally, defensive lineman, linebacker. What position do you say you play? Uh, I'll have to go with D-end. D -end. All right. All right. Yeah. That's fair. Well, welcome on. Thanks. You know, this was kind of uh, thrown together a little last minute. So we really appreciate you coming on and chatting no problem, with us. No problem. It's all good. Yeah, so we'll just kind of get right into it and, you know, just kind of ask you, how have you been doing? This is, you know, obviously there's no football this fall, and we'll get a little bit more into that. But how have you been, you know, readjusting, getting back here on campus and getting back into class? Uh, you know, it's been it's been a struggle somewhat, but, you know, uh, still being able to adapt to it, you know, for the most part. Uh, classes, my classes really are online, so not really a major challenge. You know, uh, the spring really prepped me for that. But uh, it's not it's not bad. Just as far as you know, the stopping, the starting, and the stopping. As far as like, if COVID tests pop up here, then you might have to go on a little break and then start back up. But for the most part, it hasn't been it hasn't been bad. Well, tell us a little bit about your MBA program that you're involved in. What you're in school for right now? Okay, so um, I'm currently in the uh, MBA program with the emphasis in healthcare management. I'm looking forward to you know, once obtaining that degree, I, I should be. I feel like. I should set myself up in a nice way, uh, you know, just having the credentials or, or whatever, you know, uh, being able to open some doors that, you know, maybe I can't see right now, but in the near future, it'll be able to go my way. So it's not it's not as bad as I thought it was, but still, you know, <laughs> just, just gearing up, knowing, knowing it can make a turn at any point. But, you know, it's uh, it's not it's not as bad as I thought it would be, not as intimidating as I thought it would be. but. So what do you really want to, you know, get out of it? What are you hoping to, to do after after you leave school and after football? Uh, so, you know, uh, <laughs> I feel like every college student tries to find their identity where they feel like they want to do this job and then to the next job. But uh, as far as with, you know, with the MBA in the, uh, healthcare, with the emphasis in healthcare management, uh, I'm looking forward to, like, the bigger picture as far as that. So maybe, like, CEO of a hospital or, you know, just, just taking on, like, a, a supervisor or managerial role in some aspect of, like, a major company or just, just trying to, you know, just trying to set myself up. How was that something you got involved in, or why is that something you want to do? Uh, so my senior year, I actually tore my ACL, and um, it was after I had to go to uh, physical therapy that I became very interested in, you know, the field, and that actually was the reason why I majored in uh, kinesiology for my undergrad, and um, I ended up getting a, a BS in kinesiology and then having a minor in public health, and then uh, we really didn't have you know, a program here at the time that can uh, go toward like what I wanted to, like as far as like a PT program or a PTA program. So, you know, I wanted to stay here and play ball. So I just, you know, looked and looked and then I found uh, the MBA program with the emphasis in healthcare management. And um, I'm told that, you know, in the next coming years that maybe there'll be a, a, a public health program, a master's in public health program here. But, you know, for me right now, I just, you know, I wanted something that I feel like could you know, I could identify with and take control of, and I feel like feel like I made the right decision so far. So I can tell you this: this football team is certainly glad that you chose to come <laughs> here, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But but why why Charleston Southern? You're, you're a local guy, and you know from the Palmetto State here in South Carolina. So why Charleston Southern? Uh, really, it was it was because of that same incident when I tore my ACL. Uh, I was talking to a couple of D2s at the time, but uh, the coaches that were here, Coach Chadwell and Coach Gardenia, they uh, they reached out, and then after that unfortunate event, uh, I ended up reaching out to them, and they were very receiving, and uh, they invited me here one afternoon uh, for for a preferred walk-on uh, meeting with the coaches and our families, and uh, you know got had, had the opportunity to talk to more coaches. Um, and then I actually went up to take an official visit to a D2 up in Tennessee and really didn't like it. And I mean, I was like five minutes, like, left the university, and within the next five minutes I called Coach Gardenia and told him I wanted to come to CSU. And he was just as happy as I was. So, I mean, the atmosphere just was – and it still is like that. It was just well-receiving, uh, just a family-like environment, open to you and your family, your parents. I mean, every time my parents come here, they love it. You know, little cousins, my family, they come out and do the whole tailgating thing. So it's just the whole atmosphere and the family vibe, you know. So. Well, so the fall season isn't going to happen this mm -hmm. year and the potential of 
you know, the spring season coming up in a few months. What do you what are you really missing about being on the field with your guys right now? Uh, it's just is when, when you've been doing something so long, it kind of feels like you're not doing something right. I wake up every morning, you know, I, and I'm on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday lift schedule at 9 a.m. And, you know, it's just not natural for football players to sleep in that late. You know, we're supposed to be up at 6 a.m. doing something, you know, so I just, you know, just trying to get back in the swing of things and trying to understand that it's kind of a new normal right now. But uh, for the most part, it's just practicing, you know, uh, not having that freedom to just go out and practice. And I mean, even just being in a large group with, you know, your friends, I, I'm not really like a cliquish type of person. I'm really a guy that likes to inter like, you know, intervene with everyone, you know, and you know, you can't do that right now. So it's just trying to get used to the new normal and hoping that that's not our new normal for for a long period of time. So. Yeah, you mentioned not uh, used to sleeping in. I know another person who isn't used to sleeping in is your head coach, Autry <laughs> Denson. Uh, and you, I, we, I think we all kind of know, we mentioned Autry, he gets up mm -hmm. at obscene hours yes. in the morning. Yes. But what was, to start, what was it like going from, you know, switching up coaching staffs? Is that something that, you know, not very many college athletes, mm -hmm. you know, really think that they're ever going to have to deal with is go from one coach to another. So how was that transition for you? Um, I mean, even though the first time I went through one, it was, you know, just kind of came out of nowhere to us, but we kind of heard about it even with, like with Coach Chadwell to Coach Tucker and uh, from Coach Tucker to Coach Denson. I mean, you can never really be prepared for, you know, a new, a new coach coming in. Uh, to an extent, but when a, a coach like Coach Denson comes in, who's like really just like about his business, he states what he wants. There's no beating around the bush. You kind of know what to expect from him. Um, so you know, it, it was it was kind of, I mean, for like my class and a lot of the older guys, it was an easier adjustment. But for the guys who were you know younger and who were recruited by Coach Tucker at the time, you know, they kind of took a minute to adjust and you know. You know, changing coaching staffs really isn't easy on a lot of people. You know, there are a lot of thoughts in your head. You know, am, am I am I going to be in this position still? Can my position change? Or am I going to be starting or not? But I mean, at the at the end of the day, Coach Denson is the type of coach that's like, if you're doing what you're supposed to do on and off the field, you have nothing to worry about. So he made that very clear from the start. He made it very clear where he wanted this program to be in the direction that he wants it to go in. So I mean, ever since then, like it's just been you know trying to trying to go uphill. You know, it's just always never perfect but striving to be perfect so well how i'm curious how coach kind of sold you guys on him um and kind of what you how your experience has been with him as your head coach uh for the most part it's just like you know uh, a lot of people tend to respond to somebody that's you know really successful i mean his track record really speaks for itself i mean him from being a player onto a coach and i mean once you have a, a coach like that that's really trying to get you to buy in and he's telling you kind of like the formula in the sense of like how it is to be a winning program, a lot of people tend to listen, you know. So it's pretty much just, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. Just, just you know, follow me. Just, I promise you I won't, I won't you know, lead you wrong. Trust the process. Yeah, just trust the process. It's going to be a long one, but, you know, let's just do what we have to do and, we'll get there, you know, so it's pretty much that for, for a lot of us, especially the older guys, like we saw conference championships here, like it's no reason why we shouldn't be in the conversation for top team in the conference and going on to the playoffs and then competing for a national championship, you know, so I mean, everybody, everybody wants that. And um, I feel like when you have a successful coach and a successful record such as him, you know, it's easier to listen to him and it's easy for him to lead us, you know. And you guys were definitely clicking pretty much on all cylinders at the end of last season. And yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about you on the football field. And you had a phenomenal season last year, uh, a third team All-American, if I am correct. So what, what was that kind of like for you, just playing through that season and just being being so locked in? What was it like to, to get that honor at the end of the year? It was it was really big time. Uh, I, I tell <laughs> I tell my teammates and, and my coaches all the time how blessed I am because <laughs> I didn't think I did that good. I was so hard on myself. <laughs> I was so hard on myself. I mean, I just. Why didn't a, you think that? Because it, it was just the fact that, I mean, yeah, I can have like a number of tackles a game or whatever, but I mean, I try to measure it as far as like in a team aspect. And, you know, I really wasn't happy some games with like how we played as a whole. And then we would say if we lose one game or so, but, you know, I know that. I had a okay or decent game, but we didn't come out with the win, and that, you know, that just bothered me that 
you know, that we didn't win. So I, I, I feel like I'm one of those type of players that can have, you know, like three tackles, two tackles. But as long as we win the game, I'll be content. But um, it, it was a blessing, though, to, you know, to have those accolades and to get that recognition and, um, and everything. But I, I know, like, as far as, like, with our position group, like, we were just grinding the whole time uh, from, from everybody. I mean, Eshawn Funny, Anton Williams, Chandre, uh, John Pahaha, Jahad Beeman at the time. I mean, we were just going at it. So, I mean, John Chiamani Thump. Uh, all those guys, like we just would, we just would grind every day in the summer. I mean, it was just long hours, and it, you know, it feels good to see, like you know, when you get that recognition that you know that you the the work was well worth it. You know. So, so let's talk about your summer. I'm interested to see mm. kind of what that what was like a weekly schedule for you guys. Take us through a training or a weekly training, I guess. Okay, so a four day a week schedule: uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, six a.m. runs. And then you go into immediately having um, weights right after, or you have a 10 o'clock group that comes in. And um, pretty much the rest of the day is, is for you if you have any summer courses. So time for you to knock out some homework, go to class. And Wednesday was really our off day, but if you knew better, you would treat it as a recovery day and be in the trainer room. <laughs> so, I did mean. You, did you know yes, better? Yes, I definitely know better. <laughs> An older guy definitely knows better. Uh, Norma Tech, cold tub, whatever you need done, you can come in here, roll out, stretch. But, uh, yeah, if, if you know any better, you'll use that Wednesday to try to get rested <laughs> for the next day and to try to finish the week out. And um, But pretty much for the summer, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad. It's just, you know, that transition into camp. But, you know, that's changed as well too so that should be fun <laughs> uh doing that in january well yeah january and february of next year so what, what was it like man you know for your mentality is you know you and your teammates you know with the whole you know thinking you're going to get going starting back up having to stop what's that whole process been like for you guys uh it's been challenging you know like you finally sometimes you know you catch a rhythm and it's a momentum and you keep it going and going you know everybody's showing up on time everybody's doing what they're supposed to do uh numbers are going crazy in the weight room the work ethic crazy energy is crazy and then you know you gotta stop because you know some some issues that happen and i mean you know things happen but it's just you know with this certain situation you know it's uh it, it can have drastic effects because you know it's really out of everyone's control so you know you just want to play it safe and be cautious so it's um it, it's challenging but it's always just trying to it, it, i feel like it's hard to try to find that uh that rhythm but once you get it going i mean it is it's contagious everybody's on it so like Hopefully, you know, we can just keep it going where there are no more interruptions. I mean, I feel like we had our fair share. <laughs> so, I mean, hopefully we can just keep the ball rolling. On the flip side of that, when you guys do get back on the field, mm -hmm. how has the defense improved since last season? And are you looking forward to them looking like this year? I feel, for me, as a, I feel like a culture, like <laughs> as a really old guy saying this, but I'm, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to, like, the younger players, like, especially the guys that we recruited, uh, I feel like those guys are so talented. Like just looking back, I've seen some great players come through here as far as like in the secondary, in the linebacker room, on the DL. But I'm telling you, I really feel really confident about like some of these guys. And you know, I'm looking forward to seeing those guys play. And guys that we had on IR, like whether it was, you know, like from the cornerback position or DL position, like I'm really looking forward, like Stephon Williams, like me and him play the same position and I cannot wait to see him come back and play. It's just, you know, when you, when you have that kind of connection and relationship with, a, with you know, a teammate, you know, you really want them to do the best that they can. And, you know, it's just, just exciting to just watch people play. I'm excited watching everybody work out, you know, just seeing that somebody can bench press and squat and not being interrupted or anything. So, you know, it's, it's, it feels good. So when we put the helmets back on and put the pads back on, it's, it's definitely going to be something fun to see. I feel like everybody is going to have a little bit of chip, you know, have that little chip on their shoulder, you know, feeling like, you know, it's the last time you never know when it could be taken away. So, you know, you have to play like that. So. And, you know, Anna really mentioned this, this defensive unit and all you guys, one of the better ones probably in the country at this level and you mentioned one guy Chandre Mims you said squatting he was an animal in the gym we saw that video we'll put it up there so you can see it too but what is it like for you as a guy standing there getting ready like you know standing over the ball and being able to look to your left and right and see guys like Chandre and see you know see guys like Cody Klein back behind him what kind of confidence does that give you like hey I'm 
I got, I got this. Plenty, plenty of confidence. There have been numerous amounts of times where we lined up against teams and like they just look at us off the like off the first play, and like you could just see intimidation. And um, I feel like that feels good, you know. And then at that point, okay, you you want you want the look test. So like, let's see what you can actually do. Let's see what the skill sets are like. And I feel like, you know, we we've done enough. Well, not done enough. We we've done enough to get recognized. And um, you know, at this point, it's nothing but a target on our back. But you know, it, it's with much get with much is given, much is required. You know, so I mean, it's. It's whatever, you know, that's the lifestyle we're going to live. I mean, we know we have to work. We're not settling for anything, but it's really it's really going to be fun, you know, trying to get back get back into the swing of things, you know. So now we're just looking at more ways to improve, whether it's like enhancing film study, uh, certain drills, maybe instead of just like going like hard in the drill, you just take a couple steps back and look at it and just analyze it and maybe just, you know, just tweak something technical and then you'd be like, you know, maybe this will work better if we do it like this and then, you know, working it out and seeing how it looks on, on the field. So, you know, it's, it's really exciting, you know, just trying to add different things to our, our repertoire, you know, so I feel like I feel like it would be really exciting for us. You know, we're looking forward to it. We know nobody's cutting us any slack. We definitely know that, you know, you're just not going to roll in there and nobody's not going to know who you are. So. We're up to the challenge, I feel like, and I feel like we'll be ready to go. For all the fans, we are sitting in front of the Performance Center, <laughs> so uh, that's what you're hearing right now. They're definitely getting better in there right now. But I want to hear who you're excited to be playing this season. What team or what specific player are you excited to line up against? Uh, let's see. Well, since, since we're going the uh, conference route in the spring, I'm really excited to play both uh, – it's, it's very equal, both Kennesaw and and Monmouth. Uh, you know, Monmouth is won the conference outright, so you know that's gonna we're gonna try to you know go after that. And uh, Kennesaw is just, I, it's just Kennesaw. That's all I'm saying about that. It's just Kennesaw. It's almost like we were gearing up to play the Citadel. I mean, it's Kennesaw. You know, very talented. Both. I mean, I feel like every team in our conference is very talented. Where. You know we're charged to play at at the highest level we can and at the, uh, and do the best that we can. But uh, for me personally, it's just you know trying to walk out here and you know beat those two teams. You know uh, they're great programs, both of them. And um, you know I'm a, I'm gonna give it all I have for every game. But those two, I'm very excited to play them. So I've got one more question for you, and really. It's kind of a, a two-part thing. I know you're, you're a team guy. You just, that's something that just getting to talk to you now, you can see that emphasis and how focused you are about this team. But I want a goal for yourself when you get back out there on the field and a goal for this team. What are you guys hoping to accomplish? A uh, goal for the team is definitely uh, playoffs, a conference championship, postseason play, and competing for a national championship. Uh, that's what we talk about almost every time we meet. Uh, there, I feel like there's no in-between with this team. Uh, we make it very, very uh, clear what, what our goals are. And, you know, we can do some great things and we can accomplish a lot, but I feel like the mentality is um, if we if we don't do that, then we haven't done enough. You know, even if we were to reach that point, there's still more work to do, but we have to get to that point first. But um, I feel like that's, that's how we feel as a team. But uh, personally, um, you know, I mean, third team, All-American, I would like to make first team. You know, try to maybe go for uh, defensive player of the year for our conference, you know, things like that. But um, like I said, it's it, it'll all come. But I feel like once we get those team goals out of the way, everything else will come, you know, so. Well, we look forward to watching all of those things come true for you this season. Uh, my last question for you is we spoke with Coach last week about We Choose Love. And I want to hear your take on it. He kind of told us why he put those three words in place, what it means to him and the team, the expectations he has for you guys and himself. What does it mean to you? Also a senior on the team, you're a leader. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think about that. <laughs> uh, the old guy perspective again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it came it came strictly from Coach Denson. It was on his heart. And uh, just with everything going on in the world, especially with social injustice, he just felt like he was moved to share it with the team. And you know, we received it, you know. And um, to me, it just means, you know, just, just treating everybody, I mean, this is one of the most uh, athletic atmospheres I want to least, you know, uh, like atmospheres to have, you know, like any, any, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just like discrimination. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're taking everybody in, everybody's who, who they are. You know, you come from 
different walks of life, different religions, different backgrounds, and, and you welcome everyone. So, I mean, to be able to use our platform to get that out to everybody and uh, just, I mean, I know a lot of people may not be receiving or uh, there'll be some people who, who won't be receiving, but I mean, for us as a program, that's what we're going to be. We're going, we're going to accept people as they are. We're going to ask that everyone does better. I can do better as a man. Uh, uh, another teammate can do better just to make sure that, you know, everybody is taken care of, everybody's doing fine, and, you know, to protect and love one another. But uh, I feel like as teammates, we're all charged to do that. Uh, we're all charged to look after one another. We're all charged to love one another, love each other's families, no matter, you know, like where they come from, no matter the background, the color, race, not any of that. That doesn't matter in the sports world. So, I mean, it, I, I've heard someone say if if only the world was like a locker room, you know, like where, where you don't see color, you don't see you don't see somebody for like this socioeconomic class or whatever. But I mean, we choose love is the best description and the best the best way that we can describe us as a team is uh is moving forward like with everything going on. Like we just instead of arguing, instead of bickering, instead of instead of just being just throwing hate around. We would rather just we rather just love on you. We rather just tell you how much we love you. We rather much just tell you like how much we miss you. How much we just hope that you're doing well. How much we hope that your family is doing well. We rather take that route. So that's so well said. Yeah. And yeah, no, we, we really appreciate you coming on and we appreciate your words on that. And you know, I we we love that you came on the show on short <laughs> notice for us. I appreciate the opportunity. Really do. <laughs> Awesome. So thanks, Nick. Uh, my partner, Anna Witte, Killian McClatchy. We'll see you all next time on Buccaneer Insider.